I really appreciate your being here. Um, I definitely do have a passion for mentoring. I love it. It's, you know, and it's actually turned into a sizable portion of my career. I've been, Jennifer mentioned the Birch Principal Investigator since 2007, which funds and has funded some of you. As a matter of fact, as you wish to build careers more than self and sex differences. I just got renewed for another three years of Doris Duke Fund to retain clinical scientists. And I am the director of the Career Enhancement Corps of the SCORE. I'm also the director of Women in Medicine and Science, which is a mentoring role, at least in part, for the School of Medicine. I do a lot of center mentoring of our center scientists and uh, individually, individual mentoring of a lot of people come to me. Um, you know, I do some more intensive primary mentoring and team mentoring, but I also individually mentor a lot of people who come to me for maybe a consultation, if you will, to see how they can maybe move past some barriers or move forward strategically. And I am an advisory board member of the Office of Research of Women's Health and NIH. So I do a lot. I realized when I looked at my career, I'm doing a lot of mentoring and that's because I love it. So let's talk today about common elements beneficial for all academic careers just for a minute. And I gave a lecture at NIH on this uh, Ruth Christine annual lectureship in 2019, not, not any time last year, I can tell you. Um, the three elements that I identified as being really key parts of an academic career, including include having a, your own mission, vision, and focus. So knowing kind of where you want to go, essentially, is what that boils down to having good mentorship and sponsorship. And there's a need for training. And the center, part of why we developed this curriculum of training is because we perceive that there is a need. We, we believe at the center that if you give somebody just money like a C grant, but no mentoring, no training, it may or may not be beneficial to them in the long run. If you give somebody money and also train them in their academic skills and their career development skills, as well as maybe leadership skills that that can be really beneficial, sort of holistic training. And then what about a change in the road? You can change where you're going and what you're doing. That's all allowed. You just have to, the more strategic you are about it, perhaps the better. And so mentorship and sponsorship is the subject of my talk today. And mentoring is a dynamic reciprocal relationship in a work environment between two individuals where often, but not always, one is an advanced career incumbent and the other is a less experienced person the relationship is typically aimed at fostering the development of the less experienced person. And to me, being a mentor could be summed up in one word, you're a guide. If you're a mentor, you're a guide and a partner, I guess, in developing a person's relationship with their career and helping their career move forward. So I, I divide mentors into two types that are content mentors and career mentors. There are many, you could probably subdivide into many other types. But a content mentor is responsible for developing the intellectual scholarship career of their mentee, should have experience, extensive experience and expertise in the mentee's experience area of scholarship, and should also be expected to help provide resources to support the mentee's work. And you should be meeting probably at least once a week, and sometimes it can be more than that. A career mentor might give you more expertise in career development skills and strategies. So a career mentor might be somebody who has expertise in negotiating with NIH and they would contribute that to your career, but might not be a ongoing mentor quite as much. It'd be a number of skill sets. Why is there a need for a mentor? You need a strong primary mentor to help guide the team. A mentoring team is highly beneficial. The old model of one mentor, one mentee, or one trainee is an older model that I think Given my experience on the Birch Grant, which you're required to have interdisciplinary mentoring teams, that's where I learned a lot of what I know about mentoring and I've published a lot on mentoring with the Birch model. But the team is so good for so many reasons because you get insights from several areas and points of view if you have an interdisciplinary team. And um, if you are having issues, for instance, with your primary mentor, which hopefully is rare, but can happen, you have other people you can talk to and it doesn't feel quite as fraught. If you have one mentor, it's kind of a, a little bit of pressure because if you have issues with that person, given that there is always a power differential with your mentor and you, it can get difficult. So the team kind of lightens that 
bad part that can be in the relationship and makes it more spread out across several mentors. And you get the differential expertise, which is always very important. So does mentoring make a difference? Um, academic jobs require many academic career development skills, either or both content or career mentor. And sometimes the content mentor has all the career skills that one might need, but often, as I say, a team approach is better. So mentors teach academic subjects, including how to take care, the care and feedings, if you will, of your CV, um, how to make sure your bio sketch, which all researchers must have, is appropriately put together. Uh, grant writing, manuscript writing, speaking either to the public or to the lay audience, how to get promoted, et cetera. Career development skills include leadership training, negotiation, running a lab, in terms of money, how to use money, and how to work with personnel, uh, which is a, a field in of an end of itself, which Dr. Janine Higgins has spoken about brilliantly, and uh, it's a, important things to learn. Um, developing mission, vision, and focus is a, a taught skill often. Conflict management, resilience, and many other skills are part of career development. I find that these skills get taught less often. That's why when we put together the curriculum for the center's trainings, we made sure to include not only academic subjects, but also career development skills so that everybody learns the skills they need to have a fully realized and uh, you know, excellent and productive career. That's our hope. And we're always open to new ideas for trainings as well, by the way. We welcome your ideas. You are also experts and budding experts and some more developed experts. So what do mentors do? Mentors provide advice, feedback on coaching on a regular basis. Again, I think, especially in the early days of the career, in, when you're an assistant professor, mentorship should be pretty regular, at least weekly maybe bi-weekly. I'm, I'm a proponent of the weekly or more approach. Um, this kind of thing is, is very important for continuity. A mentor should help direct the career course of the person being mentored. It should not be necessarily in the direction of the person. I mean, it should not be in your direction as a mentor that you direct the career course of the person. It should be in the direction that suits that person that you are mentoring. And this is an important point to me, that we're here as guides and you know, colleagues and many other things, but as mentors. But one thing a mentor should not do is be seeking to make over their trainee in their own image. It should be in the best possible image of the person that you are mentoring. A mentor should read every grant and paper that their trainees write, especially at an early stage. And I have come more and more to the thought that even people become associate professors, and I've actually heard this said, I don't need mentoring anymore, I'm on my own. And that's said with some joy as if discovering the independence. And yes, there is greater independence, but I think that everybody benefits from some mentoring, maybe at a much lower level, but as you progress through your career, mentoring never completely goes away. I look for mentoring, it gets harder to find as you get more senior, but I often look for advice and I value it highly and I learn as I go. Um, the person who is your mentor should be introducing you to people that you need to know to advance your careers, like national, national experts in the field with whom you can collaborate and with whom, from whom you can also get letters for promotion and such things which are required in our promotions process. You have to have three outside letters. I am not saying that you should make friends across the country just to get those outside letters, but as part of forming collaborations nationally, and internationally, which are very exciting processes, you will get involved in projects nationally and internationally, like being on an NIH working group or being you know, given, asked to give a talk in Finland or wherever. And those are exciting opportunities. And you get to know people, you get to work with people, you build your reputation. You're required as you get more senior to have a national, international reputation. And you will not acquire that the, deal, the day before you submit your dossier for promotion. So it's a thing to start early in your career with your mentor's strong help in introducing you to the right people. A mentor should be helping you develop into your best you, who you want to be, with guidance and nuance and strategy provided by the mentor, but really it should be to meet your goals. I found this uh, UBU, confidence is in you, and pass it on. And this is a young musician named Grace Vanderwall, who now is all of 17 and already has a 
an enormous musical career. And I just like the posters. So but I like that statement, you be you. And if you feel like you can't be you, your career is not going to be fun. And it all absolutely should be fun. So what are the characteristics of a good mentor? And I have a list, but I would like to stop here and for the next few minutes, ask you all to list, it can be three or more, most important qualities of a good mentor. So let's take, I don't know, 10 minutes at most, and everyone produce a list of what you think the ideal qualities of a good mentor are, and then we'll discuss it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes is too long, maybe five minutes, it's 9.14, so at 9.20, we'll reconvene and discuss for a few minutes. I'd like to hear what people think are the good qualities, best qualities of a mentor, so go ahead.
Okay, let's talk. Let me stop sharing for a minute with the hope that I can resume sharing so I can see everybody, which is much more fun than um, not. Um, so what? who would like to comment? I'd like to dig into this a little bit. What do you think? What does somebody want to say what their top qualities for a mentor are? Anybody? So I can go. So I think my um, top qualities are availability, um, being kind of uh, willing to give advice and critical feedback to not just kind of everything is great, but willing to have some hard conversation on areas that you can really improve on and um, being willing to give direction in terms of ideas for next steps forward in your career as well. Okay, those are good comments, Lane. Um, being willing to give the hard advice sometimes, that's good. And uh, to me, you're not really doing your job if you're not willing to say, hey, let's think about this a little bit. But sometimes it can be painful and hard on both sides. Yeah, I'd just like to echo that. I think I realized as faculty, when I first joined that I'd never really had mentorship until I had Sarah Faubel because like the, you know, when I'd been in academics and a student for a long time, but before that I'd always just kind of gotten um, pats on the back and it was really hard at first to hear you need to do this better or this isn't up to snuff. And I remember thinking at first, man, this is, I don't know that we're going to be a good fit until I realized, oh, actually she's being an excellent mentor. <laughs> and this is what I've been missing um, for so long. And Gina, if you're not taking these down, can you please keep a record of what people are giving? Because I want to collect feedback, if you don't mind. We're uh, recording too, Judy. Oh, that's OK. I don't want to listen to myself again. <laughs> oh, no, no. Those are good comments, Danielle. I mean, people think they're, people don't want to hear the hard truth, but we'd rather hear the hard truth than not get the corrections we need, because how does that help us? So. It can be hard sometimes to say, hey, I don't think, and plus, you know, who am I to judge your work? I say to myself, you know, I'm not all that bold, but yet if you aren't willing to do that, you can't really be a useful mentor. Well, and another breakthrough that happened like shortly after was realizing that I, I need to try to be Sarah Powell because we're so different and I could never be that person. And I remember she actually brought it up. She's like, you know, I've been, we, we had this kind of breakthrough where like, you are you and you are totally different from me. And then it, um, like it, it really opened things up and was, was much uh, more fulfilling and less nerve wracking, for sure. Yeah, she's a, a lovely person and a very talented, but people can be talented in very different ways. In fact, they are talented in very different ways. So I think that's important to recognize. If you look at somebody and say, how could I ever be them? You can't, but you can be your best you. And that could be pretty darn exciting or better even. Melanie, do you have any thoughts? You're, you've been a highly successful scientist, but I've known <laughs> that you were a, a um, Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, I had put some of my, my comments in there. I, I think, again, uh, echoing the availability. Um, I think the sponsorship, you know, I feel like that's been kind of a newer concept the last couple of years. Um, and um, as I just got a request from one of my, my mentees right now, who's, you know, looking at a, doing a, a rotation at the NIH and who should I contact, you know, my response back to her is, oh no, these are my, these are my friends there. Let me contact them for you. Um, I, you know, I think, and seeing, you know, um, and I, you know, I've seen Jane in action doing this at, at the last two endocrine society meetings for me. You know, she'll go drag me, and she's done this with, I think, with Becky too. I mean, she was dragging us around the women in endocrinology meeting with, you know, me tucked in. Oh, you, we, I have to go introduce you to this woman, and I have to go. But you know, and you just sent that email putting me together with somebody. I, I think. Um, at this level in my career, I'm really, especially since I just got to associate and thinking, oh, well, I'm going to have to go, for, Professor, what you were commenting on about the outside contacts, that sponsorship and helping your mentee make those connections, um, make those professional connections or putting them together with somebody who um, 
you know, also recognizing where you don't have expertise and saying, you know, I can't help you with this, but I can help you find somebody who can. Um, and so I think somebody had said humility, somebody had said humility, um, you know, knowing your limits as well, I think, um, I think those are kind of the things that I've been focusing on um, recently. And Laura, Irene, any thoughts to add? Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, I, it, it seems like sort of a no brainer um, that the mentor should really um, have the mentee's goals um, as a priority. But I, I've certainly heard of mentors who basically think of their mentees as uh, their workforce. Um, so I, I think that that's a very important thing that um, that a mentor keep the mentee's goals in mind independent of their own. That was sort of my first uh, thought. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, I mean, if, if I can add something, Fabrice, uh, Fabrice here. Um, yeah, well, I, I guess the, the job of the, of the mentor in that case is really to make the uh, the goals of his goal, the goal of the lab and the goal of the, of the mentee align basically. Uh, is, is, I think is when he's good mentoring is when uh, uh, um, the mentor will uh, will help the mentee to develop into a, a full scientist, um, but also uh, let's say make his work or her work a part of the of the lab work, the, the team. And now that can also benefit benefit to all the people in the lab and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah, keeping the goals aligned. But I think where the tricky part comes in is that you don't push your goals upon the mentee, you yeah. make sure that they're with you and that they're excited about what they're doing. Because the minute you try to force somebody into your mold, it's yeah. it's not it's not as it should be. Yeah, and or even uh, playing the, the mentees against each other <laughs> to, to compete. Oh <laughs> now that kind of person is uh, toxic and would, should fully be avoided. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, Laura, were you? Sorry. Well, I, yeah, I, I um, came up the, with the word selfless, although I think that's a little extreme because you can't be totally selfless because you yourself need to be successful in order for your mentees to be successful. So there's a balance there. And I think that that then becomes rooted in how secure you are with your own career. And to echo what you said at the beginning, Judy, your goals, your mission, um, and you had a third thing too, um, and, and you know, really feeling like, okay, this is this; these are my goals. How can I then help mentees expand the field, etc.? But so it's, it's so it's definitely a balance. But I, I think you do have to come in with the selfless attitude. Um, but be grounded in your own uh, career and success first, potentially before you take on mentees. I actually think there's something I've made up called the altruism gene. And I think that people that do not have it cannot be good mentors. You have to be somewhat altruistic. Yet I will also tell you that I think that mentors get great benefit from working with mentees, including new ideas, new collaborations, a whole new you know, your name on publications, your name on uh, all kinds of things. So I think that a mentee contributes greatly to the career of their mentor. But I don't, I think if their mentor enters into it looking for benefit rather than having that piece of altruism or selflessness in their character, I just don't think it works. And I think when you're seeking a mentor, you better feel, think that you may see that in somebody or maybe don't work with them. But let me start. Let me talk a little more. I could talk about this all day, but I will stop. It's a great, see, I'm not only sharing my screen once, but multiple times, which is a great progression. So I wrote down some characteristics of a good mentor, including they should be a good role model. You shouldn't work with somebody whom you don't admire or think is a good person in many ways and a good scientist. Um, mentor is an advisor. They are reliable. They don't constantly change your meeting times, although they may have to sometimes. They view it as a reciprocal relationship. They don't think that they're the great benefactor and the young person is the you know humble whatever. They are definitely looking for 
reciprocity and, and a relationship, a, a mutual relationship. They promote you. Like Melanie said, they drag you around and introduce you to people that they need you need to meet. They are respectful of you. There is respect has to be a huge element. They are a hardworking person. If you perceive them as, obviously, if you perceive somebody as a lazy slob, you're not going to want to work with them. So I don't need to say that. And they are altruistic. I definitely feel that this is a key quality. So what are the good characteristics of a good trainee or mentee? And I was going to have a full discussion on this as well, but I realized maybe I will put this to the end and go a little farther, but it's something to think about. What makes you a good trainee if you are a trainee or a good mentor? I think it's important to think about what you value because it's partly about values, whether you'll find a good fit in a mentor. I've had too many conversations with people. You will not believe this because most of you are well-mentored and are good mentors yourselves, but I have talked to many, not just a few, women and men who feel that they are stuck with their mentor and that there's no one else they could talk to and they can't leave their mentor and they're not happy about it, but they feel really trapped and not a good relationship. So I'm glad to see a lot of people have a good mentoring relationship. So to move through this a little faster, good trainee is also reliable, plans ahead, manages up. I have often found that if you show up to meet with your mentor and you are prepared and you have an agenda, the meeting will go smoothly, plus it'll be on your agenda. So there's the plus of that. So coming in with an agenda to a meeting with your mentor, managing up, yes. Helpful, also yes. A trainee should have a thoughtful approach to their work and should also be hardworking. Thinking about, and all of you are hardworking, so this is not meant to say anything other, but you know, thinking about who you are as a person and what your values are and what your mission is in your work, and that can change your mission, vision, and focus, which is another unit that we teach. Um, it's important to kind of know what your North Star is at any time, because all of you probably know where you're heading. You might not know exactly how you're going to get there, and you might change where you're heading, and how to do that thoughtfully can be very helpful. Um, a characteristics, again, of a good mentee, you identify your personal mission and vision as best you can, and again, it can change. You seek feedback, you ask questions, and you use feedback to improve performance. There are people who get very defensive criticism. Those people are going to have trouble in our career because we get a lot of criticism. And if you don't get it from your mentor, you're going to get it from NIH for sure. They'll be happy to deliver that to you. And, you know, I still work with people on the response to reviewers of a manuscript or a grant that if you're snarky about it in the least, if you're, you can be snarky privately, but if you bring that snark to your written response, <clears throat> you will not do well because you don't control the funding or the publication, somebody else does. So you have to follow through responsibly and uh, take, take uh, charge. You should expect your mentor to be a role model and advocate for you. That should be a given. And if that isn't the case, that's a problem. And you should also be respectful and considerate of your mentor. It should be a two-way street. It's a very important relationship you need to understand each other's working communication and relational styles. And I've seen this actually be a, a real sticking point that if people have different styles and there aren't, their styles are not compatible, it's a problem. So beware when you meet with somebody, you almost are interviewing a potential mentor. You are interviewing a potential mentor. Some people are again, worried about finding any mentor and they grab at straws. Make sure it's gonna work. Be sure, be clearly aware of who your own personal and professional qualities are that will help you in assessing whether somebody can be a good mentor to you. And you might have to interview a few potential mentors in order to find the right match. And that can be hard. If you're in a field where there aren't a lot of people doing what you do, it can be hard to the point where this place could be not the best place if your field is so unsupported. However, I think all of us try to be to find mentoring for people who may even have a harder fit, but it can be tough, but you still can't work with somebody who you can't work with. And to be entrapped into that is painful. So should one question I will address because um, this is Center for Women's Health Research, should mentors for women, women be women? And I was sure that people would all say the data would show that this was in fact widely acknowledge that this would be true, but the literature doesn't completely support that. Um, in a 
systematic review, having a mentor was clearly important for career success. Without mentors, there's decreased job satisfaction, limited career development, and reduced productivity. Some female ment mentees purported no gender preference. Some wanted female mentors at different stages in their careers because they can provide more advice, perhaps, on life balance. However, not all people felt that way. And a good male mentor is a good male mentor. It's a, it's a great thing. I've had both female and male mentors, and the male mentor was a wonderful mentor. One barrier is that there are not enough senior female mentors. There are many fewer full professors who are women than are, who are men. So I would say if the mentor is a man and it's a good fit for the mentoring, then that's a good thing. But it's something to think about when you look for a mentor, if that is clearly very important to you. The pitfalls are, are not... Usually, I think people find good mentors, and hopefully most of you have very harmonious relationships with your mentors, but there are pitfalls. There is always a power differential between the more senior person and the junior person. And as a junior person, this can be very painful. It can be painful for the senior person as well, but a lot of people are not aware of this differential. They just don't think of themselves as powerful, but a mentor is a powerful person. And it's important to think of yourself as powerful when you're in that relationship and to be careful about the vulnerability. Um, there can be a conflict of interest. If the mentor wants to go in one direction and the mentee wants to go in another direction, you know, what's the right answer <clears throat> that leads you to, that leaves you able to be you, your best you as a junior person, but might be a good career decision. And these things are worthy of discussion. And ideally, you will have a mentor with whom you can talk freely when things arise. When your goals differ, it can provide conflict. I've seen that. I've seen it, and it can be not, not very pretty, or in fact, downright ugly to see. And that's, again, where the true north, the more you know about who you are as a trainee, will help you guide you in your decisions about what you do. Because I have, I mean, I was offered a job early in my career at um, Hopkins. And I looked at that job and I consulted my gut, which is also a chief participant in my career choices. And I just felt kind of sick about it at the time. And it was a reasonably good job for a junior person, I thought. And it was certainly a prestigious institution, but just didn't resonate right with me. And my mentor at the time was thinking of moving there. That's partly why it arose. But in the end, neither of us moved there, but it didn't feel like a good choice to me. So just because your mentor says jump, you don't have to say how high. But if you have a good mentor, that's not going to happen because your mentor will talk to you about it and consult how you feel about it and the fit for you. Because the fit for you is equally important. So when you choose a mentor, you should ask the question, are your goals compatible? And are your values compatible? Does your mentor candidate have good credentials in your field? If you're going to have a content mentor who's, you know, and it's important that they have the knowledge in your field, does that person have the credentials you need them to have? Will that mentor candidate do that? And I call them a candidate deliberately because, again, when you're interviewing a mentor, you need to think about the fitness of that mentor for you in every way. Will that mentor candidate do their utmost to further career? Their, your career? Will they be like Jane? Will they drag you from, you know, famous person to famous person to get you the right people? I also do that, you know, when I am able to go to meetings again, and even hopefully from remotely, from a remote situation, but they should be doing that. Do you like that person? If you don't like them, don't work with them. It's horrible to work with somebody you don't like. Now, don't like, what does that mean? Hopefully, you know, it's, there's reasons you don't like the person you know, there are some stinkers out there in academia. Mostly not. Mostly people are wonderful. I know some of the very best people that I know, some of my closest friends, some of my most favorite colleagues. Most of them probably are in academia. That's where I spend a lot of my time. But if I didn't like somebody, I'd have a hard time working with them. This doesn't come up very often, but if there's a somehow a personality thing, which you don't work well together, don't. And can you picture working with that person for years? Because that's what you're going to do, most likely. 
So changing mentors in the worst situation, and again, in this group, I don't expect to hear a lot of this, but I've heard it more than you might imagine, of course, confidentially. Uh, why change if you're incompatible in some way, if your goals have changed? Say you want to head into a different area of science within your field and somebody else might be a better mentor. That's fine if you have a poor relationship. How to change? Well, your mentoring team, this is where the team comes in again, can help you think about other potential mentors for your career. And sometimes it is not at all controversial. And in fact, both parties will benefit. And I make a point of this, not because it happens that commonly, but it certainly happens. And people should be comfortable with their mentors. As I mentioned earlier, your job should be fun. As Jane and I both say, I've heard us both say it, some days it's amazing that they pay us to do what we do. They better keep paying us, so don't get me wrong, but because we love doing what we do so much. You know, it's like fun. It's so much fun that it's exciting to, uh, to be doing it. And because of that, um, if you're in a situation work with people for, with whom it is not fun to work, then that's a bad choice. So it's rare, but you got to think about it. And sometimes it's really just the way your career is moving in a different direction. Like if you go into, say, you start in physiology, move into health services research or some other area, you might need different mentors. And you might keep your old mentors to help you with certain things, but then you might need new content mentors. It can happen and everyone benefits. So what's the difference between a mentor and a sponsor? You've already heard about sponsorship. And sponsors in this talk, but it's different from mentorship. It's usually more episodic than mentorship. Mentorship, I, I sort of think of, I do think of as a long-term relationship, which goes on, which is regular. A sponsorship can also be a long-term relationship, but might be more episodic. A sponsor and a mentor, a mentor can be a sponsor in certain situations as well. And a sponsor can be an advocate, usually in high positions, who uses their influence intentionally to help others advance. And I'll give you a personal example. Years and years ago, when I was working on the Diabetes Prevention Program, which was a multi-center NIH trial, I, had, I met Bill Haskell, the professor at Stanford, expert in exercise and um, you know, just in behavioral change and, ex and exercise. And Bill was just that a wonderful person. And we worked together on a project and he sponsored me throughout my career. And then I was able to have the honor to invite him to participate in things. And this was something he did for a lot of people. It's just somehow I got on his radar. So when there was a good meeting at NIH, a workshop to be on at NIH that resulted in a paper, I was invited on exercise and diabetes, for instance. When there was a great meeting in Finland that I got to, I got to invited to speak by him who ran the meeting. In the um, Physical Activity Guidelines for Americans, he chaired that whole effort for Health and Human Services and I was invited to be part of that. And it was an honor and a pleasure to work with this man. He was amazing. And he just took an interest and helped sponsor me. I, he wasn't my mentor, but he was a sponsor. And there's an example you know, of a, of a person who just took the time and he did this for many people. And it was a, incredible that he did this. And it was a high point, and it's been a high point of my career. And so when I have opportunities to invite him to participate in things, I always take them. So he was a sponsor, not a mentor, and just wonderful. But a mentor, such as Jane, can also be a sponsor. And I hope I also uh, recommend people for things, for awards, for various honors, by helping to help people along the way with opportunities. It's fun to share the wealth. It's fun to, get, to find opportunities and share them. It's a great thing to do. So sponsors invite the person they are sponsoring to an important meeting, to be an author on a paper, to speak at a conference, to take a new position sometimes. They nominate the person being sponsored for an award or other honor, and they introduce the person being mentored to people that they need to know to advance their careers. And that again is partially, that last item is both for sponsors and for mentors. So, um, but it's important. It's, this is a critical thing for people to move ahead. So to summarize, a strategic approach to an academic career requires mentoring, in addition to developing your North Star, because in part, the mentor will be benefited from knowing where you're trying to head. And sure, they're going to give you lots of critique, and they're going to help you with your papers and your grants, every one of them. 
but they're also going to be benefited by knowing what your goals are. So it's important to think about what your goals are. And again, they can change. And then the center also provides this training that we hope helps you develop your academic careers as well as your fully fledged career development. Uh, I think it's really important, all of these things, because they will help you aim high and be the most successful that you can possibly be, which is the goal. And I will say that the center's return on investment, which I never knew how to measure so well as, you know, with the advent of Jennifer and Ann Kirschmar, figuring out what our return on investment is. If we talk about a seed grant or a birch grant being investment, the return on our investment is we're about to, we're crossing 100 million in NIH funding from you guys, for you guys, not for to the center. It'd be nice if NIH sent us a kickback, but they do not, not, not even anything. So, and we do not want it. But our ROI is something like $1 invested to $92 returned in the way that we measure success is by you being successful. So I think it's really important to think about how to be successful. I want the center to be a part of your success. I think we have a very high return on investment, again, measured by your success. So we're very happy about that. It works out well. I think, again, just handing somebody money while nice isn't the full answer to successful careers. And I think that men mentoring is critical. So I listed here some of the people that I work with whom I highly, highly value. And uh, many of you are on the list. And uh, these are people with whom I work and treasure those relationships. And some started, I've met, known since they were fellows and some I've met more recently, but thanks everybody. So let's talk, let me take myself off the share. I'm so proud I did that three times and I got back my screen each time. So I consider myself fortunate. So now we have time to talk for a few minutes, which is important to me because I'd like to hear what you think about mentoring. Because I always learn these additional conversations will help me and you, hopefully. I remember, so I don't want to monopolize the conversation, but one of my first memories of being um, Sarah's mentee, she, um, she told, she like looked, it was like a very serious conversation. And she was like, you know, we need to enter this, like it's a marriage because we're going to be together for at least seven years. Um, and we need to have that kind of relationship. Um, and I remember, I, I don't know that I would have taken it with, the amount of gravitas um, that that I have, uh, if if she hadn't made me realize that. Other comments. <clears throat> Thanks, Judy. I think um, I agree with what we were talking about earlier with regards to goals. Um, I've had some really really terrible mentors, but I've had the most fantastic mentors as well especially my current mentor, Bob, who's just been great. And I think a lot of that comes from some something innate about mentors being just really enthusiastic about wanting to mentor you. So I think that I just wanted to echo that. I, when we were talking about what we feel about um, or what we value in our mentees, I actually have a t-shirt which just says, um, work hard and be nice. And um, it's just the most simple message, but I think that is exactly what I value in people. And I think everything else can come can come from that. I totally agree. I decided as I got more senior that one of the privileges I would take is not to work with people that I, that, I mean, there's nobody that I work with deliberately that I don't think is a nice person, but to me, you have to be both smart and nice. There's too much of the exam, too many examples of smart and nice to, for me to want to work with somebody who's just smart. It's tedious to find somebody. I mean, in academia, there's a lot of smart people, sure. But there's also a lot of smart people in the community as I've learned from working with the advisory board of the center. And I have lots to learn. Everyone has lots to learn. Let's all support each other. And uh, that's what I think is important. So if you're not smart and nice, don't apply to the center. Actually, that's not true. You could apply and you could get funded, but you wouldn't last long. People would get you. No. Other thoughts? Mary, you're, unfortunately for you, I know you well though, and I'll call on you, you're a postdoc. And so I'm looking for compliments or insults, but I just like your observation. I mean, I think, 
um, for me at this stage in my career, it's been interesting going from my PhD and having a mentor who I worked really well with to a postdoc who I also work with very well with, um, but who are very different. And I think that's been something that's been really valuable um, is, is looking at the different mentors I've had so far and, and finding sort of aspects of each of them that I, I want to aspire to. I mean, they're both wonderful people. They've all, all my mentors have been, but but kind of taking those little pieces um, of the role models that those, those individuals have been and thinking about what I want to be as a mentor um, as I get further on in my career. That's good. Kristen, you are a master mentor, I would say. Um, you are our first seed grant recipient, which we will never let you forget, <laughs> no matter how many R01s you may acquire. Well, Judy, first of all, thank you to you for your mentorship, um, because I, I owe most of anything I've ever done um, to the mentors I've had. So thank you. <laughs> um, um, and the thoughts I had were that um, following on what Mary just said, um, I did the diversity, equity, and inclusion certificate this past month. And one thing that got mentioned in there that I hadn't heard said explicitly before that I um, really thought was um, a great point was to think about um, this it doesn't have to be your primary mentor because you don't necessarily have this choice or availability, but in general, who you sort of think of as the people you go to and, and ask for feedback from or advice from to, to try to think about making sure you've got some diversity there, um, you know, be it in thought or in um, sex or race or whatever, but just making sure that you're not just in an echo chamber of, of talking to only people that think like you. Um, and I, I, was, I was glad to have heard that and I'm trying to think about how to do that differently for myself too, to have um, you know, people that I can run ideas by too that, um, that might not think the same as me and to, to how we can both benefit from that. Um, and, and the other was that um, I really like how you on your slides lay out what it takes to be a good mentee because I think as I'm reflecting back that maybe what I've done is waited until a, a, a mentee that I'm working with displayed a characteristic that they needed work on to bring it up rather than prospectively at the beginning in our very first mentor meeting saying here's what it you know takes to be successful and these are the things that um, you know that as a mentee you're going to do better if you if you do these things um, so I, I really like seeing that all in one slide we'll send out the slides you know shortly um, Noi, you're relatively junior, so of course I will call on you. What are your thoughts about mentor mentoring? Yeah, this, this, um, thanks, G, for this talk. This came at a really nice time for me because I had just kind of completed my prism in you know the first year of my faculty position, and and one of the um, an area that I expressed of just what I need additional information is, is how do, how do you measure effective mentoring? And then how do you be a good mentee? And, you know, I've had, so far I've had, I've had the privilege of having really great mentors who have led me up into this point into my career. And then also um, certainly um, being able to work with you and, and, and my other Birch mentors. Um, and one of the challenges I do, I have noticed is how do you go about even kind of the dating process of finding a mentor? Um, and, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I've, I've reached out to folks who I've worked with in the past and other studies and they've been, you know, thankfully really great mentors, but I didn't really do the dating process and really learned and got to know them really well. So, so I guess for, for folks who, and even kind of myself and thinking in the future of, you know, if I wanted a different mentor, I wanted to reach out to folks and, and connect a new mentorship team. How do you even kind of go about initiating that conversation? We can, as a group, discuss this. It's it's um, it doesn't have to be that awkward because your goals may be changing and evolving. So you can say, "I'd like to add so and so to my mentoring team." You can talk to the person first and see that they're willing, and then say to your primary mentor, "I want to add." This person to the team, and it can evolve that the new person becomes your primary mentor. Even, you know, with with good mentors, they're not going to ding you for changing. It's like asking for a second opinion in a way. You know, if a good a good doctor is not going to say to you, you know, how dare you ask for that second opinion? You're out of here. And people want what's best for you. They're going to accept that this might be a direction in which you're going. It does not have to be an indictment of the old former mentors personality, talent, anything. So a little diplomacy is probably called for. 
but everyone should be happy when a trainee moves in their best direction. Mm -hmm. And you can, if you know why it's your best direction, see, that's where finding your true north is so important. Mm -hmm. Figuring out what your goals are. Where do you want to end up? Where are you trying to get to? And again, that can change and it does change over time. But having an idea of your direction helps you chart your course towards that direction. So you do strategic career development. Yeah. So when somebody's, and again, there is that gut piece where you say, that does not sound like me. And if it doesn't sound like you, it might not be you. And then you probably shouldn't go that way. Because you know, you're a smart person. You're all very smart people. And it's not like you don't know what you are interested in doing. So you're kind of charting the course. It is on you. It, this is your career we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But change can be done. Adding somebody to your team can be done. You know, you can even change your entire area of focus. That's more unusual, but you can do that. It's a lot of choice. Other thoughts on that? You know I'm likely to call on you if you don't speak up, so watch out. How about you, Vanessa? Any thoughts on this topic? Sure. Um, you know, I like to kind of echo what uh, Kristen was saying about diversity in that um, I haven't had a lot of ethnic diversity in my mentorship, but I've had a lot of like uh, family diversity, gender diversity, um, but also a lot of thought diversity. And one thing that has really helped me as a researcher is having a mentor who comes from such a different perspective than me. For example, my main mentor is Paul. So I study bone for those who don't know me. Paul studies obesity. He's, he's not even close to being a bone person. <laughs> And so it forced me because I had to re, I had to shift how I explained everything that I was thinking about to him in a way that he could understand. And it would, he would challenge me in ways that I had never even considered. And so what it did is it really broadened my horizons about how I think about concepts that I had taken for granted for so long. And it really strengthened me as a researcher, as well as a grant writer. And so I, I think having just perspectives is just so incredibly important for, for a person's development. I agree. Kelly, how about you? You're fairly junior, you're doing great. What's your thoughts? Um, I would say something that I recently learned, um, which may be incredibly obvious to a lot of people, but since I'm so new at all of this, um, is the importance of, of reaching out and kind of connecting with mentors in other departments. Um, I did a fellowship and, you know, was specifically in one department um, for three years and developed really strong mentorship relationships with people in my department. Um, but I learned this year doing a, a T32 fellowship in a different department that having different mentors in other departments can be really helpful for that new perspective um, and connecting with other people that have different resources and different ideas and um, different ways of kind of coming at a problem. Um, I found that really helpful um, and really exciting. Great, how about, I think one, if Jennifer, I can go on for one minute over, but not too long over because I'm too punctual. You know, Stacy, Ramon, Chelsea, Alyssa, any thoughts you would like, and Stephanie, any other thoughts on mentoring? I mean, one of the things that for me, reflecting back on kind of my most positive mentorship experiences, um, and I know it's tough because everyone is so time limited, but was actually like engaging in some work, like it, during a mentorship meeting. So kind of like if, we're, if I was struggling with a section of a paper saying like, let's work on it right now and engaging in the writing process and engaging in the brainstorming process. And I think it helped me to learn about how my mentors work rather than just getting feedback and for them to learn about how I work. Um, and I think it just like really strengthened those relationships. So if a, I try to do that now, working with students, um, yeah, it's been so valuable. Stacy. Um, yeah, I would just add, and I know you, you mentioned this in the beginning, the value of having not just one mentor, but, but more than one. And um, I would also say the value of peer mentorship and a number of um, my peer mentors are on this call as well, but that's been really valuable um, to have a group of folks at um, a similar level or, you know, different levels and just getting their perspectives and um, help having them as cheerleaders as well. 
I like that. It's it's true. Just having companions along the way, so to speak, it makes the journey so much more pleasant. It makes it fun and it makes it more productive. So, well, thank you all. I just love this discussion. I love talking about mentoring and I learned good things that I will incorporate into my thinking. And uh, thank you so much for participating today. So I know Jennifer has some wrap up notes. So let me turn it back over to Jennifer. And I'm actually going to turn it over to Nan Uday, who's going to um, do the kind of some our usual closing remarks. Thank you all. It was very great. Sorry, Nan. And thank you. Thank you, Judy, for a great presentation. We just wanted to remind you to please fill out your evaluation that will be coming to you shortly. Uh, a couple of other reminders about some events coming up. We have uh, our next researcher training on March 12th. Dr. Ann Libby will be speaking about mission, vision, and focus, which Judy spoke about today. Um, okay. we'll a special um, event with the Scientific Council. That will be virtual as well, of course, but we'll um, keep you posted on that. We don't have a date quite yet, to let you know. And then our Let's Talk series, our uh, community education event is on February 18th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Um, and that will be on traditionally on heart health the month of February. So the title of that is Mending a Broken Heart Technology Treatments and Threats. Um, and then finally, our Women's Health Symposium is on February 27th. That will be from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Lots of great speakers, and you can also get some continuing medical education credits if you need them. So, lots of things going on the next few months. Thank you all. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.